In this video series we're going to learn how to make this game of Hangman using a MVC or a model viewer controller architecture um, using Python and using PyQt. So just a little example um, running through how the program works. We all know how we're playing Hangman but we're going to be making a program which will actually make this very program and do this very thing. So, uh, here we are, winner with colon. Not every day you get to say that. So, to start off with this lesson, well, this to this particular video is going to be all about setting up our environment. Um, so, this is going to be using GitHub repos um, GitHub desktop. I've set up, I'm going to create a GitHub repository, and then from that we're again going to open up in Visual Studio Code, we're going to set up a virtual environment, we're going to import all the files that we need, the files that I'll provide, we're going to install the appropriate packages, get ourselves all set up, so by the end of this particular video we're ready to go on actually creating, starting and creating our game. So here I mean GitHub Desktop, I'm just going to come up to here and I'm going to create myself a new repository, so I'm going to click on the drop down here and go Add, and say um, create a new repository. Now this one you guys can just call GUI Hangman but I'm going to call it GUI Hangman, sorry. Um, I'm going to call it GUI Hangman Video because I already have a have a repository with GUI Hangman. So I've got that set up there, um, I'm not going to initialize, I'll initialize with the readme, that's sometimes useful to have in there, and I'm now going to create the repository. It's been created, it's been done on my computer, on what's called the um, origin, and now I'm going to publish it up to the main. So publish, and then I can say, that's what I want to call it, description, um, I don't um, making the hangman in GUI. Um, I'm going to keep the code private and just going to keep it that way. So it's going to publish my repository. It's going to go up and then I'm going to open in Visual Studio Code. So here we are. And we can see that in Visual Studio Code, there's very little in there. So, what do we need to do to actually get cracking with this? So, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create our virtual environment. Now, Python is a stripped down program. Um, you install a lot of packages into it. If you keep installing those packages into your base Python um, folder, you're going to have a very bloated version of Python. So, you use virtual environment to create a little folder, a little directory, a little project folder, and you make your own version of um, Python into there, and that's where you install your packages, and those are the packages you use just for that project. Um, if you have another project, you will have a different copy of Python, you have a different set of packages, and it just prevents it from becoming bloated, and it just becomes a lot more slim and usable. You also prevent conflicts if you have packages which might have the same name. So, to do that, I'm going to open a terminal up, new terminal. Now, um, in um, I'm working obviously in Windows, but if you're in a Mac, I think you're opening up and it'll be bash. Um, so you can do that, but the instructions are pretty much the same. The only big difference is that whenever I type Python in a Mac, you should type Python 3 because a lot of, I'm still not sure if it's still the case, but a lot of the older Python, um, a lot of the older Mac operating systems had a version of Python 2 on it built in. So, to create a virtual environment, I'm simply going to sit there and say um, Python um, dash M, which means run a Python module. And the virtual module we're going to run is VENV, stands for virtual environment, which creates a virtual environment. I now need to give that virtual environment a name, and I'm going to call it dot .venv, which is a, that's what it always calls my virtual environments. You can call it whatever you want. You can call it Alfred or Fred or, or Michelle if you want. It doesn't matter. Um, but I like to keep it that way. I like having the dot at the front because that actually also moves it up to the top of my file listings over here and gets it out of the way. So um, if I run that now, you'll see it will pop along here. And... It's creating my virtual environment. You can see a folder's already come up here, 
And you can see in my Git repository, it already says, oh God, I've got to upload 1,098 pending changes because that's the entire Python that I've just created across there. So what I'm going to do, well, first off, I don't want to upload the virtual environment. Um, I just want to upload my code that I'm making. So to do, to prevent um, Git from actually uploading other or particular files that you don't want uploaded, I'm going to create a, a file called git, um, dot .git ig ignore right and in here in the dot git ignore all I need to do is I need to list all the files or directories that I don't want to actually have uploaded so the actual directory which is backslash ven which is the directory from this this directory here so it's saying from the current directory go to the directory dot ven um, and notice in, in Python and in everything apart from um, uh, Microsoft um, Windows the slash is the forward slash, not the backslash. So forward slash dot ven is the one I don't want. If I save this now, I've just pressed control S to save. And you see now it's just dropped down to one file which needs to be uploaded. And that's the git ignore file. Okay, so now I have actually created my virtual environment. But the thing is, I'm not actually running my virtual environment. How do I know that? Is because down here in the very front of my... Um, in the front of my prompt here, it needs to say brackets dot venv. So to run that, what I need to do is I need to actually activate a file, and the file is in here. Um, it's in scripts, and it's called activate. But I'm just going to do it through the actual terminal here. So I'm going to say um, dot dot venv um, tab. Um, SCR tab um, AT activate and if I run that you'll see now this is telling me that my virtual environment is actually up and running awesome now if you're in a Mac you need to type in instead um, sorry source um, dot venv um, dot bin dot Activate apparently I don't know I don't have a Mac I can't check that that works and it should be source not south um, but that's what you apparently should be typing in if not if that doesn't work you have to Google it and work out exactly how to activate your um, your active direct your um, virtual environment so I've done that now. Now it's time to start installing the packages that we're going to be using for this. So the package first off what I want to do because I've got an older version of Python. Well, it's, it's not absolutely new. I'm going to update um, pip, which is our Python package installer. So Python m pip, right? And what I want to do, I want to type install, which is means get a package. What package do I want to do? Well, first off, I want to upgrade. So I only want to do this if it's a new package. Upgrade, and I want to upgrade pip. That's their package that I want to actually upgrade. So I press enter, and it's going to run through and it's going to say, yep, that's been, that's the old version's been uninstalled, the new version has been successfully installed. So I've now got the latest version of pip on there, which is awesome, because that just ensures all, that ensures that all the packages, links, and requirements are all met. It's just a useful thing to do, trust me on that one. So now, I need to actually install um, PyQt6, which is the, the PyQt um, library that we're gonna be using in this particular um, example so or this project again Python module pip I want to install um, PYQT6 enter and you see it's downloading and getting the packages from there um, it's now been installed and I now have PyQt and if I come up here now to my virtual environment and if I have a look down here and if I look in libraries there'll be all these PyQt libraries in there. Cool, that's awesome to know. Okay, what else do we need to do now? Okay, so we need to add some files. Now these files for my students are on, um, on our Teams. Um, for everyone else, I'm gonna put a link in the, um, in the bottom of the video here in, in to a folder which will have all these files. But the files we wanna install first is we wanna install our um, and do, do, do. I want to install the hangman, this one, and this one. 
Get installed. Oh, these two files, I'm just dragging them across. I've got them opened up here. I've already downloaded them. Dragging them across and put them inside. Now make sure they're inside this normal directory and they're not inside the virtual environment. So they're here, they're inside the directory and I've now got three files that I want to sync. That's good. Um, I also then want to um, install, um, we also want to in, bring across our um, dictionary, which it gives us all the words we're going to use. You can see there's all the dictionaries there, all the words. And I'm going to rename main window and come into that. I'm going to rename him into um, hangman.py. .py. Okay, so this is a boilerplate code which is going to work really, really well with our PyQt code which is generated from this here, which is our PyQt file. Now, I created this up in Qt Designer. I'll put a link to where you can get Qt Designer in the program down here. But for my students, we've already done this separately. Um, but it's just a starting file because this is all about creating the code behind it and not worrying about the user interface. Um, so the PyQt, I'm sorry, Qt Designer will make this particular um, XML file. Um, and then we will convert that across into a Python file for us to use at a later point, actually. Let's do that right now. So to convert this across to a useful Python file, I'm going to come down to the terminal, make sure I'm still on .venv, and in here I'm going to type py for Python UI converting, py uic and then 6, because 6 is the version that we're doing. Um, dash for the actual source, um, for the um, object file for it to go into, <sighs> underscore hang man.py so this is a file that's going to create uh, yep I might actually just change that across to lowercase u um, ui.hangman.py and then I want to go slash x and I'll show you why we do that later on hangman.ui this is the so this is saying this is the source file which is this file here that I've got open. And from this source file, we want you to convert the UI file across to a Python file called UE um, um, hangman.py. So I type enter in that, and there it is. It's made that. So you can see from here, you can see it's made a little bit of code. And that's, that's all the code that you would need to type out if you wanted to actually create that user interface um, manually. But luckily, because of Qt Designer, we've got away with having to do that. Right here, so I've done that. We've got there, we've generated the files, we've copied it across. So what I need to do is come back to this boilerplate. Our main program, which is, is set up to automatically run with this particular file, I need to change a couple of things. The first thing to change now is I need to, the only thing I need to change is this, is put what the UI file name is. And I call that ui.hangman. You notice now that all the squiggle lines under here and the squiggle lines under here have all gone and it's it's happy. Um, so I can actually run this and, well, no, I've got to run that as a Python file, not run code. And here we have the actual user interface. Like it doesn't do anything because we haven't given any instructions, but you can see that the user interface is up there how it was originally. Okay, so what else do we need to do now? Um, we need to bring in the assets folder. So I'm going to bring in this, which is an assets zip. I'm going to do a right mouse click. And can I extract in here? Mm, probably not by the looks of it. So I'm going to go reveal in Explorer, bring it up here, and I'm just going to extract all within this folder done and it results you can see we've got all the stages of the hangman happening there that's the image files and you can see up there it's actually given me an assets folder which is what I wanted to have set up now um, so I now can get rid of the assets I don't need you anymore I click on that then I can I need to now assets.zip is gone and I need to make another Python file in here called data store.py at the moment this is going to be blank 
but I've got that created. I can get rid of you. I got rid of the assets folder instead of the assets zip file. Get rid of the assets zip file. Right, that's better. Now, again, I have to go new file, and this is called datastore.py. Done. Radio, I've done that. I've got the dictionary. So now I'm just got a little list over here that I need to check that I've got that this directory, which is my um, hangman directory, it needs to have the .ven folder, which it does, and it has the assets directory, which it does. You should have a git ignore file, which it does, and the git attribute, which just gives us details that you can use in relation to GitHub. It um, has my data store, which is next dictionary. Yes. Hangman, yes. Hangman.ui, yes. Um, and the UI hangman.py. So now we are all set up and ready to do our, um, our programming. So before we do that, let's just minimize that, come back to GitHub Desktop. I'm just going to say um, initialize project directory radio and I'm going to commit that to main and I'm going to push that up into my repository so it's there nice and safe and that's it that's our initial setup um, video in relation to our hangman our GUI hangman project